So right now, I'll just go ahead to shade out the parts we'll be cutting out. So I'll shade the dart point and also shade out the keyhole point. So Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'll be showing you guys how to draft a bustier with a keyhole yoke. So we're going to be having the keyhole yoke for the front part while the back part is going to have just a normal yoke. So we drafted on our pattern paper first for more clarity and for more precise measurements. So I have my pattern paper here and it's in a fold of two. So I folded the paper using the biggest part of my upper body, which is my bust measurement. So my round bust measurement divided by 4 is 10.5 inches and I added 4 extra inches to it, making 14.5 inches. So I have a 14.5 um, inches on fold here. So the extra inches is going to be for the seam allowance and for the dart. So the first thing you want to do is to draw out a starting line at the top of your pattern paper. So this line is going to serve as the shoulder line we will be taking all our vertical measurements from. So from this line, I'm going to take my shoulder to my bust, my shoulder to my under bust, and my shoulder to my high waist measurement. So my shoulder to my bust measurement is 10 inches, and to my under bust is 13.5 inches, and to my high waist length is 16 inches. So right now, I'll take my ruler and just extend these lines horizontally. So after extending, let's go ahead to label the lines now. The first line is the shoulder line, the second is the bust line, the third is the under bust, and the last line is the waist line. So after labeling, come over to the shoulder line and place your shoulder to shoulder measurements divided by 2. So from the closed angle, take your shoulder to shoulder measurements divided by 2. For me, I have 8 inches. So if you are working with, um, you are making a sleeveless top, go ahead to subtract one inch from whatever you have there. So this is to make sure that the shoulder is not too wide after you cut out your fabric. So from that point, take your round armhole measurements divided by two. For me, I have nine inches. And then I'll take my ruler and just connect the two points together this way. So I'll go ahead to further extend the line to form my chest line. So I'll just extend the line this way. And then this line is going to be called the chest line. So on this armhole line, I'm going to take my shoulder slope, which is one inch from the shoulder line. I'll come down by one inch this way. And then I'll go over to mark my neckline measurement. So for the wideness of the neckline, I'll be working with 4 inches. So you can use whatever you want for your own top. And then for the depth of the neckline, I'll be taking 3 inches. So I'll take my curved ruler and just form my round neckline this way. So I'll go ahead to connect my neck width down to meet the shoulder slope. So after connecting, this is what we have. So for the um, armhole curve, I'm going to come over to this armhole line and take the midpoint, which is 4 inches, 4 inches for me. And then from that 4 inches point, I'm going to come in by 0 0.5 inches. Then on the chest line, I'll mark my round bust measurement divided by 4, which is 10.5 inches. So right now, I'll take my curved ruler and just connect the points this way to get my perfect armhole curve. So I'll go ahead to connect the three points this way. So this is what we have. So after placing our basic vertical measurement on the pattern paper, the next thing now is to place our dart. So go over to the closed angle of your pattern paper and mark your nipple to nipple measurements divided by two. So for me, I have four inches. So I'll go ahead and place four inches on the waistline from the closed angle. I'll place 4 inches on the under bust and I'll mark the same 4 inches on the bust line and on the chest line. So after marking, I'm going to use my ruler now to connect all the points together. So I'll connect all the 4 inches I marked on all the lines. I'll connect it together. So after doing that, I'll come over now to the shoulder line. 
and look for the midpoint i look for the midpoint there so i have about four inches here so the midpoint is going to be about two inches and then i'll use my ruler now to connect that two inches mark down to meet my dart line so go ahead to connect the points together so after connecting this is what we have so the next thing to do now is to place our dart so come over to the waistline so so on the side of the line towards the closed angle of the paper go ahead to take one inch there if you're working with a small sized person you can also use one inch on the other side but for if you're working with a bigger sized person go ahead to take 1.5 inches on the other side so i get a lot of questions about this um that measurement so if it's a big sized person take 1.5 inches on this side and then on the under bust line repeat the same thing you took on the waistline so one inch on the side towards the closed angle and 1.5 inch on the other side but if it's a small size person just use one inch for both sides it's still going to come out very well so go ahead to connect the points together and then on the bust line come down by 0 0.5 inches so this is to avoid any pointy effect on the bust point so i'll use my curve ruler now to connect the under bust that down to meet the 0 0.5 inches below my bust line and then i'll do the same thing for the other side so you should also have something that looks like this so the next thing to do is to determine how high you want your yoke to be so from my chest line now i'll come up by 1.5 inches on this line i drew so if you want your um yoke to be smaller you can go as high as two inches or three inches depends on you so on the 1.5 inches i mark i'm going to take one inch on the angle towards the armhole and 0 0.5 inch on the other side which is towards the closed edge and then i'll take my curved ruler and just connect them down to meet my bust line this way connect it this way So after connecting this is what i have and you should have something that looks like this as well so for the lower part of the bust here we'll be having a sweetheart yoke so you can decide to just connect that point down to meet your chest line but for me i'm going to come up by 0 0.5 inches from my chest line because i don't want the um, chest area to be opened so i'll just take it up this way and then i'll use my curved ruler to connect it to meet my dart point this way So on the other side, I'm just going to go ahead and connect the other that to meet my armhole curve this way. And I'll just blend it in very well. So guys, you can see the yoke and the bustier coming out already. So the next thing to do now is to place our round body measurements. So on the bust line, I'll place my round bust measurements divided by 4, which is 10.5 inches. And then I'll take into consideration the that I have at the top. I'll just take 1 inch for the that, make it 11.5 inches, and then 1 inch for seam allowance, making 12.5 inches. 1.5 inch for seam allowance, making 13 inches. So I'll go ahead and place 13 inches there. And then on the waistline, I'll mark my round waist measurements divided by 4. And then I'll go ahead to add the 2 inches for that, making 11.5 inches. And then I'll add 1 inch for seam allowance, making 12.5 inches. So I'll go ahead and place 12.5 inches on the waistline. And then I'll take my ruler and just connect the points together. So we are done with the lower part of this uh, top. We're done with the bustier part of the top. The next thing to do now is to place our keyhole yoke. Is to get the keyhole yoke design. So depending on how open you want your keyhole to be, you can decide to come down by um, 2 inches or 1.5 inches. But for me, I don't want the chest area to be too exposed. So I'll be taking 3.5 inches. So that by the time I fold it in, I'm going to be left with about 3 inches. And the next thing to do is to determine how, where you want your yoke to stop. So for me, I want mine to stop just after the that point. So I'm just taking my curve ruler now and, and I'll curve it to meet the bustier pattern. So guys, this is basically all for the bustier with keyhole yoke, the front pattern. 
so i'll go ahead now to just label the upper part as the yoke so right now i will just shade out the parts that we are going to be cutting out so these shaded parts are the parts that we are going to be cutting out of this pattern so the unshaded parts are the parts we'll be working with so next thing to do now is to cut out the pattern so go ahead to cut it out so like i said earlier the shaded parts are the parts we are going to be cutting out like the parts we'll be discarding so i'll go ahead to open up the dart point this way and then i'll also cut out the the keyhole yoke So after cutting out this is what we have so this is what it looks like after cutting out so i'll go ahead to open it up so you guys can see so after opening up this is what it looks like you can see how beautiful it looks and how easy it is to achieve so when i'm cutting on my fabric i'm going to add half an inch to all the that side so that by the time i join it i'm still going to have the same accurate measurement so let's go ahead to cut out the back panel now so for the back panel i have my pattern paper here it's in a fold of two so on the closed angle i took out one inch for my zipper allowance so i'll be taking all my measurements from that zipper allowance so that it won't interfere with it so i have run out the starting line which is also the shoulder line so right now i'm going to just go ahead and place my vertical measurement so from my shoulder to my bust point is 10 inches and then to my waistline is 16 inches so i'll just go ahead and extend these lines um horizontally so notice that i'm stopping on my zipper allowance so i'm taking on my measurements before it so i'll go ahead to just label it so the next thing to do is to mark the shoulder to shoulder measurement divided by two which is eight inches for me remember to subtract one inch if you are uh, making a, a sleeveless dress or top and then i'll come down by my round armhole measurements divided by two which is nine inches i'll use my ruler now to connect the two points together this way and then i'll further extend this line to form my chest line so the next thing to do now is to mark the neckline measurement so the wideness of the neck just like the front panel is four inches so note that you must always use the same neck width for the front and the back panel so take it from the zipper allowance and then for the depth i'll come down by seven inches because it's a v-shaped neckline and then i'll connect the points together Then i'll come over to the armhole point and take my shoulder slope which is one inch and then connect the one inch to meet my neck width and then for the armhole curve i'm going to just take my round bust measurements divided by four on the chest line which is 10.5 inches so remember i'm taking all these measurements from the zipper allowance not before the zipper allowance and then i took the center point and i'll just connect it to form my armhole curve so i'm, I'm doing this very fast because it's like a repetition of what we did for the front part so right now I'll take my dart so from the um, zipper allowance coming by your bust pan measurements divided by two which is four inches for me and then i will just connect the lines together this way and then on the waistline i'll take one inch on both sides of the line so if you're on the small size you can make use of 0 0.75 inches so just mark it this way and then i'll connect it now to meet my bust line So guys if you are working with the same fabric you might not necessarily need a yoke for the back part but if you are working with two different fabrics like maybe a lace for the upper part and ankara for the lower part then you can make your yoke for the back part so my yoke is going to be starting at the point where the neckline is um the depth of the neckline so what i'm going to do is that you can work you can make it straight you can make it anyhow you want it to look but for me i'll just take my ruler and curve it out this way from the neck depth so the upper part is going to be my yoke i'm just going to go ahead to label it i hope you guys understand what i did here so you can make yours straight you can make it in whatever shape you want it to be 
it's fine it's going to still come out really nice so that upper part is going to be my yoke while the lower part is going to be for the other fabric so, so the next thing to do now is to place our round body measurement so on the bust line i'll place my round bust measurements divided by four plus one inch for seam allowance making 11.5 inches and on the waistline i'll place my round width measurements divided by four and i'll add the two inches that plus one inch for seam allowance making 11.5 inches so i'll go ahead to just connect the points together So this is what we have after connecting so to avoid any zip bulging at the back i'm going to go over to the waistline and come in by 0 0.5 inches so from the waistline just going by 0 0.5 inches towards the zipper allowance and then i'll use my ruler to slant it to slant it down to the um to the upper back of this pattern so that by the time we sew it it's going to be um, fitted at the zipper point so i'm going to cut that excess out i'm going to cut this excess out so this is basically all for the back part of the um pattern of the bustier top so your yoke like i said you can decide to make use of any shape you want for your back yoke or you can decide to just leave it the way it is so the next thing to do now is to cut out the pattern so go ahead to cut it out so i'll just go ahead to separate the yoke from the lower bodies just as you can see so this upper part i'm cutting out is going to be a different fabric while the lower part is going to be another fabric so i'll go ahead to cut out the um zipper bulge allowance so after cutting out this is what it looks like this is what we have so i'll show you guys the front and the back pieces together before we use it to cut on our fabric so guys this is the finished product of the front pattern and the back pattern so i'm going to use this to cut on my fabric and i'll probably show you guys another video how to join and sew the bustier top with keyhole yoke so don't forget to give this video a thumbs up leave a comment and subscribe to my channel and i'll see you guys in my next video bye